uh, the project case, uh, project cases of uh, Pluto and Itches and Apache, and then goes on to some components or building blocks of field, oil field or gas development, and then goes on to petroleum components or the mixture inside. So the current uh, activity near Australia is very high. So each project is around this point. So Plut is another one. Plut is near uh, 10 p.m. Uh, clockwise positioning on Australia. So this is a Pluto site. And 10 years ago, uh, 200 kilometer from Peninsula, and water depth, 1,000 meter up to, so it's a deep water, right? And mainly on gas producing, and revenue, revenue means uh, yearly, yearly production money. Australian dollar, what is the exchange rate? Australian dollar, somebody knows about it? And job creations. So this is a Woodside uh, company, company, Australia website. And then what else? They have a uh, project like uh, FLNG and else. Yeah. Okay, this is a Woodside uh, Pluto project uh, layout. And this is, you said, this is a riser coming from the seabed. And it is about 200 kilometer from the uh, land side. And you can see that the subsea well, and there is a tie back. Tie back is a device. Uh, tie uh, some small pipelines into one. And gas is uh, exported through the pipeline. These are pipelines. Eh? And onshore, there is a LNG gas treatment plant. This is an onshore LNG plant. Five trillion ton per year. There is a capacity. So this time you can see that no, no ship, no shuttle tanker between uh, gas field to the port. But, but you see that there is a LNG tanker. Right? But this is for exporting. Exporting probably to the Japan or South Korea or China. So production, they use only pipelines. But for the export, after, after processing, creating a commercial uh, quality LNG gas or liquid, they use ships for the exporting. <coughs> and operational, about 20 or 30 years, then maybe this is empty, right? And the pipelines, this is a distance from 180 kilometer shore and gas and condensate from shore through the 35 inch diameter uh, export pipeline. And subsea manifold and wells, uh, 800 meter down, and the kilometer of pipelines, and then risers. Okay. What else we can see that? This is another project. I explained this one before. So this is uh, near the Indonesia. And north, about 11 
PM uh, clockwise positioning. And this is a Timor. Timor is uh, Indonesia, a part of Indonesia or separate one. So the sea of Indonesia is like this one. So it is a boundary uh, near the boundary of Australia and Indonesia, approximately 200 kilometers from the mainland. So similar distance as before, but water depth is shallow, shallower than before. And same picture I showed you before, right? So CPF, Central Processing Facility, is in, uh, constructed by Samsung Heavy, and then this is a contract price with uh, uh, each project team. And also FPSO, FPSO, it is constructed by Daewoo Shipbuilding and Marine Engineering. It is a little bit lower price of uh, contract. But it looks like this one is more expensive, but maybe this one is expensive. And subsurface condensate pipeline is through this. Right? And sometimes gas is exported direct to the mainland. But here probably oil is, uh, or liqui liquefied ones using off offtake tanker for the shuttle tankers. Maybe they use this one for the direct export or to the land. And the CPF, it is uh, coming from their project team. And they say the uh, list of equipment they use for this project, each project. This is design capacity of X gas of daily uh, amount. And four leg, this is four leg, semi submersible hull structure. So main uh, buoyancy support tone is coming from this uh, two down there. So it's a little bit uh, deeper here so that they do not have any less effect from the wave. So the motion is smaller. And four group of each one has seven mooring lines or legs. So you say 28 total mooring legs or lines. Inlet gas flow control, manifolding, is about the rises and topside choke and flow lines and production trains. And inlet separation is to separate bulk liquid from the gas. And TEG, TEG is a triethylen glycol gas dehydration. Dehydration means uh, uh, eliminate water, Hyd hydrate, eh? dehydrate. So the oil or gas, I want to take only oil and gas, but there is a, a seawater is inside and also chemicals, other chemicals inside. Sometimes the mud is inside, coming together. When, when we pumping out from the down there, the liquid and gas and mud and chemicals, water coming together. So separation, we need a separation. Gas export compression, four trains of export compression, discharge rate or pump cap capacity, condensate export to the FPSO. This one is separate one, right? So there is another unit called FPSO constructed by Deu. So the condensate export, condensate export, so condensate export line. So from CPF to the FPSO. And accommodation, there is a persons are locating in here and this is a heliport. So they uh, travel to the land through the heli helicopter and some supplies too. And this is a uh, accommodation or hotel facility and chemical injection package and MEG, TEG, monoethylene or 
lens. And this is FPS sofa constructed by uh, Deu. Weather waning turret mooring. Weather waning turret mooring. This is a turret mooring. So, a special device, something rotating, rotating device. Because the pipeline coming from the seabed, they are very complex. But if ship is rotating in this way, the pipelines can be jagged each other, right? So that the device is special. So the pipeline is stayed still. Only, only ship is rotating. Usually they do not rotate in full degree. They rotate some, say, 100 degree, something. Right? So we, we say this is a weather baning rather than rotation, weather baning moving in this way. But still, the pipe part should be stay still. Only ship is moving. But difficulty is coming that the gas or liquid should be pumping into the ship while they have a, a relative motion. So there is a special device, we can say that. So there are many patterns about this uh, turret mooring. So it's a very uh, interesting device and very expensive one. So there are only several uh, companies who can uh, produce weather baining, weather baining turret mooring. And there are three mooring lines, 21 total for the, for the turret, for the turret. So mooring line looks like uh, these ones look like a mooring line, black ones, right? black ones. Right? Three groups, but it looks three lines, but seven lines. And 12 paths swiveling, there is a turret. Inside, there is a swiveling pipe through. And production storage, this is all 1.2 million barrels. Condensate treatment and stabilization. They want to have a separation, separation of mud and water and gas and oil, and sometimes some chemical. Not all of the chemical, because they need to be refined another way in the land side. So it is a first step of treatment here. Okay, separators, so three phase separators. Heat exchanger, condensate, tank capacity. This is uh, designed in this way so that the ship shuttle tanker is coming when the tank is full so that they upload, uh, offloading, offloading this amount of uh, capacity into the shuttle tank. Mercury, mercury is one of the uh, dangerous chemical inside, right? So they want to be removed first. Flash gas compression, flash gas is a bond here. And MEG again, regeneration and produced water. Water is uh, dehydrated and separated. So they need to also treat it before discharge. And then finally the shuttle tanker is coming. All right, turret is very interesting device. And same picture I showed you before. And ITCHIS project committee has a head office in Tokyo because Impex is a Japan company. But they have a project with a Total Australia. And ITCHIS project organization, you see that 2 billion and 2.5 billion project is only a portion of this whole project. So that you may uh, expect that the whole project can be several tens of billion dollars. Right? So it's a big project. And field architecture, is, you said that this is a drawing, typical drawing. So that this is, a, this drawing is produced by Impex and also another company called JP Kidney, Kidney? is a well-known uh, engineering company, global. 
and uh, uh, drawing number and then who drawed and then and, and other markings. And this shows uh, CPF is located here, FPS is located here, and pipelines, main pipeline goes into wells and then manifold and pipelines. Right, Apache is another project. Okay. So, uh, there it says black oil field, and they have a FPSO, and they usually separate out water and gas. Uh, injection means when they produce or, or pumping out the oil field or gas field, there is an empty creature, right? So they, they refill the empty well using water and sometimes gas, CO2 gas sometimes, right? depending on this use. Facilities, there are 10 wells, two manifold, one gas injection and two water injection wells, and dual production uh, flow line, flexible line. This is flexible line. Flexible means this is uh, not straight one. Right? And injection, injection goes together with the uh, pumping up, right? Sometimes if you inject with the pressure, then oil is coming automatically. Right? You, you, you uh, uh, take out oil and there is, take, comes with an empty space. So it's coming together, right? Injection and pumping out together. Building blocks, field development. You should, should start with the reserve. Oil and gas should be there, right? How big is it? Is it economical? How is the surrounding? It is a ro hard rock there or mud. What is the shape? What is the chemical inside? And hydrocarbon. Hydrocarbon is a, can be a gas or oil now. And production processing. How can we capture or pumping those oil and gas. So there is options between subsea production. Nowadays, the oil field is coming into the deep water, deep water, right? Because they, there is no more reservoirs. Also deeper, deeper, and also far away, far away. So the transportation is cost, costly. Also, people don't want to stay there. Right? Because it is far away. So they want to do uh, automatically and also do remotely, processing at the site, primary processing at the site. I don't want to bring mud to the land side. Right? I don't want to bring water to the land side. So eliminate mud and water there. I want to capture oil and gas and then bring to the land side because it is far away. Or once again, they want to have a primary treatment down below at the seabed position rather than pumping into the uh, water level, ocean surface. Okay. There is another way because it is deep, deep down there. So we have a subsea engineering is more important. Health, safety, and environment is always important because it is a dangerous place. Dangerous because of the ocean. Ocean is very uh, rough sea there. Storm is coming. And also they handling very dangerous chemicals, oil and gas. And fire is always chemical. Investment decision, this is a process. Final investment decision. Okay, this field is economical, so we we'll start. And then in the schedule and plan, and then there is a project is starting. Petroleum field what is the final slide. There's some composition inside the natural gas composition. When the natural gas is pumped out, they have a and CO2, LNG, this is the main component we want to catch, right? LNG and LPG. But there are other things, so we need to separate out. And each project, Pluto, 
which is and the other project, they have different com combinations, yeah? different com even though they are all LNG site, gas site. So the chemical components uh, mixture is different, so that you need to have a different, a sli slightly different processing or facility. There's a key point to be made. All right. Oh, one more. Okay, processing, processing. So mainly at the seaside or subseaside separation and conditioning. Conditioning means a little bit hand handling, conditioning and land-based, sometimes platform-based or floating-based. And what is this? Water, oil and gas, there is settling down and pumping is going on, production flow lines, chemical distribution, and flow manifold, riser, and separators there. And then we can separate out oil and gas. Oh, one video. Okay. FMC is a very famous company in, in service engineering field. Probably near Norway or something. Northern Europe. This is ROV, ROV, and this is dynamic positioning propellers. You may expect the uh, remote control is very important. Remote operation, remote control, and visions also. You should check whether this is working correctly. Far on the side, one kilometer, 
depth of the water. So the ROV is pulling, rotating the dips for the correct position using a tow line for the docking. inside the device. So this is locked and, and snapped for the connection between pipelines. ROV is checking all the devices well connected and placed for safety. And then they detach the device. All right, okay, that's it, I guess. on to next that's by uh, Khalifa. Hmm? <laughs> oh, I did not know that. Oh, okay. Uh, uh, then I should cover this. Uh, okay. Mm, that's why he is not responding to me. All right. Uh, uh, let's see. Let's see. So. This is all last year's material. All right, service production. Hearing on it, don't it? Let me review again. All right, so subsea production and Christmas tree and subsea pipelines, production lasers and subsea burst and corrosion protection. There's contact. So once again, the FMC is a famous technology company for the subsea engineering field. And the typical layout we already see several times. Once again, there is a well starting from the well, trees and well head. So each well has a, a gas and oil is coming from the land seabed. So each point there is a small uh, well head and also Christmas tree for the blow of prevention. Yeah? And then they collect the, through the pipelines, and collection is done and combined into at the manifold side. And through the manifold, there's a, a more uh, bigger uh, 
larger diameter pipe is going through up to the risers. And the umbilical usually saying this is not pipeline. This is for the control, the chemical, no, no, electrical. Uh, uh, electricity is coming and control signal is coming. So it's about uh, uh, electrical cables. We call the umbilical means usually goes with the uh, ROV. ROV is coming together with the umbilical line. Right? It's control and electricity. Power, power supply and flow, li flow lines and pipelines and riser is bigger and also should be stronger because this is very long, one kilometer long. Then the, uh, uh, the weight of the pipe is very big because one kilometer of pipe is hanging to the uh, uh, platform over there. FPS4 or EPF. So that self weight is big. So you should have a stronger and also the volume of flow is also big. So that's why they use uh, flexible risers to make another way to lower down the uh, hanging uh, weight. And then top side control And the size, the size of this one of the device, say this one, or probably manifold, I guess. And here's a person, all trucks, right? So that the underwater uh, service engineering is a very big one. This is a hydro company name, and this is a two manifold, one and two. And natural gas capacity is 2,000 feet, cubic feet per day. And Christmas tree, right, Christmas tree. Onshore Christmas tree, very small size, human size, but offshore tree is big. Wellhead, this is a seabed and pipe is coming and gas and oil is coming. So they need to have a, 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 some devices to a ceiling when something is happening. Sometimes the uh, very high pressure is coming from the well. So at that time they shut down close by by BOF, BOP uh, devices and they contained inside uh, this tree, like a shape. And see, see, some trees, Christmas trees, there is a mud line tree, and then this is a, inside there, there is a small devices, and other, and pumps and valves are also con con controlled there. So this is coming from the Wikipedia and land side. Christmas tree or just tree is a assembly of bulbs and spools and fitting that used for oil well and gas well, water injection well. The surface pressure control provided by this Christmas tree, which is installed at top of the wellhead, top of the wellhead. So this is the device that prevent or control the pressure fluctuations. And the, each time there is a, a names, this is a international standard number. And so there's a assembly tree of this Christmas tree, the pipeline, valve, and, and valves and, and wellhead housing and close to it. And manifold, this is manifold. This is an arrangement of pipe and designed to combine or distribute control of food manifold. Subsea manifold. Also, you can find the manifold inside the uh, engine housing, automotive car, right? because you have a, a 
cylinder usually have a four cylinder inside the uh, engine, automotive car engine, or sometimes six cylinder. So gas is going, air is going into there and then and, and burned out, gas is going out, exhaust gas. So six of them or four of them, they are collected into one single pipe and then goes out to the end of tail of the car. So that kind of device that collect gas is coming from the cylinder because of manifold. So same name is going. Sub C manifolds are installed on the seabed with the array of wells together, together, and or injector or into the well. Any question? Pipelines, flow lines, or pipeline from the wellhead to the riser. This is the riser. Sometimes this is a fixed one, sometimes it's a floating one, but now it shows a fixed one. The footing is fixed to the seabed. We call this as a flow line, wellhead, subsea wellhead, and manifold, collecting, combining, and flow lines, and risers. Riser means going up, upstairs to the surface. And sometimes it's cross lines or pipelines, Design process of pipelines, requirement, design requirement, design analysis, and optimized design project, and rotation, rotation, or iteration, iteration. Internal diameter and outer diameter is coming. And pipeline installation. This is looks like a pipeline installation ship or cable laying ship, but this is a pipe. Uh, sag bend uh, and over bend and sag bend and touch down point of the pipe. Because this is a <coughs> steel pipe, right? it is a size of this large. So they maybe break when this is more uh, higher uh, is, uh, curved. So very similar, looks similar to the cable laying ship. The pipe is more bigger. Right? So this is a piece of pipers. They may be connected and produced and laying down in this way. So it's a complex. This is not a pipe, I guess. This is more like, looks like a cables. And subsea. Subsea equipment, umbilical risers and flow lines. Once again, they're similar, right? Similar. So uh, now at this point, you may understand why the names of the devices inside this one. But once again, I want to sh say that uh, more and more functions are going down to the seabed than before because the water depth is higher. So they want to do some primary uh, operation there. So the device is going down, going down more than before. That's why the subsea engineering is coming more important than before. This is a drill bit, drill bit. You can imagine the size of a big, comparing to the person. So drilling, drilling device bit. And once again, the Christmas tree. Christmas tree, the oil of processing, prevention, prevention. Right, let me see. This is ROV. They are checking from our remote control from the operator here. This is a drill ship, drill, drilling tower, and riser, and this is Christ, Christmas tree, and then this is sea floor, and drill bit is there, and this is a component of each part of this Christmas tree. Okay. 
Okay. And the production riser. Inside the production riser, uh, there is different uh, types of risers. This is top tension production riser, this high pressure drilling riser, injection riser, low pressure drilling riser, high pressure drilling riser. The components are a little bit different. Okay. And then also coatings, covers, there are many, many layers, many layers to have a strong enough and also flexible enough. So uh, uh, this is a real uh, cut down of, uh, I take picture this one from the ABS in Texas, Austin, no. Texas, there is a headquarter of ABS. ABS is American Bureau of Shipping. They display this one. This is a sample of riser, riser. Uh, two, two pipe is coming together, but inside there is also small pipe is coming, and looks like this is a cables okay, coming together. And flexibilizers, flexibilizer, because this is uh, very long and heavy, so that you can imagine that this point, this point, all the weight is hanging there, right? So it should be very heavy and also it should be very strong there. But sometimes it can be tilting the whole structure because of the pulling down. So sometimes if, if this is very long, you need to have a special device. Sometimes this is balloon, looks like a balloon. Eh? Balloon is used to hang. So it's buoyancy forces, buoyancy forces to lower down the pressure <coughs> or weight. Then much better, right? Much better. Also, the pipe size is smaller. If the weight is because of weight, because of the weight, not only this device, but also the pipe thickness should be higher, right? Because of tension is higher. So the to lose down, they use uh, some kind of a balloon there. Then the riser should be curve shape in this way. So we need to have a flexible riser. Buoyancy, so that they use a buoyancy, the balloon, balloon is used. So they have a different names, but anyway, a steep wave, lazy wave, brilliant wave. But anyway, the same idea as flotation attached to the riser. This is flotation flotation devices, so buoy, buoy type, right? large buoy, and buoyancy is supplied by modules, and clamping is there. So this is a buoyancy module, right? two half shells clamped together, so it is a kind of a buoy held in the pipeline, clamped, and overbend, so to, provide, to avoid over bending of the rise, there is uh, some angles and profile. So hybrid riser, sometimes they use a pipe, big pipe or tank to provide a buoyancy tank. So it is uh, hanging in the middle of the water, not, not up to the surface, middle of the, but the riser is, uh, looks like a cable far away. Relative motion and flexible and hard piping. Still, this is a steel pipe. So, it's a complicated question. Sometimes that happens, an accident. The pipeline, seabed pipeline is burst, then what happened? The gas and oil is coming, leak from the pipeline. Then it can be uh, dangerous to Environment also that can be have an explosion sometimes. So we should uh, clean up or remedy. Right? But how can you do that? It's a 1,000 meter down. How can you 
repair that. Right? This is a problem. So you, you cannot dive there. Right? Only device is ROV or robot. Right? robot. So sometimes you can think about how to handling this kind of repairing or maintenance. So this is a cases coming abroad, uh, brittle burst, because brittle means uh, the uh, fracture is coming because of the temperature and also the hardening of the uh, aging, old aged, uh, so that chemical is different. And sometimes other failures. Three gauge, yeah, fitting, opening, the connection point, right? Connection point, there is a failure to come. Erosion, and because of the, so maintenance is very uh, heavy work there. And also flow lines are depressurized. Burst. The old one looks like an old one, right? Okay, corrosion. So that's why we need to have a corrosion protection there. Corrosion. Uh, you know about corrosion. Electrochemical interactions. So because of the electricity and chemical reactions, so how can we minimize that corrosion? Right. That's it for today. No questions. So we need to have a more live discussion session next, right? All right. See you on Wednesday.